After ovulation, we're going to see that the follicle is going to collapse. There's going to be some bleeding, and it's going to be called a hemorrhagic follicle. So let's take a closer look over here. The red here depicts the fact that there's some bleeding. The granulosa cells undergo a change. They are going to produce, in addition to estrogen, they're going to produce progesterone. And the estrogen and progesterone are going to support a pregnancy if it occurs. This process by which the cells produce more steroid hormone is called luteinization because the cells become more yellow in color. The interna cells also become more glandular, and the blue that you see around here represents the cells of the theca interna, which are also producing more hormone. And then finally, the cells of the theca externa are depicted here. Within a very short period of time, as these cells undergo this process of luteinization, they give rise to a structure which is called a corpus luteum. So let's take a closer look at the corpus luteum. So here's the corpus luteum, both the granulosa cells which have become luteinized and the cells of the theca interna which have become luteinized also are producing steroid hormones, particularly progesterone, which is going to support the pregnancy and also some estrogen. Now as long as this corpus luteum is present and secreting these hormones, a pregnancy can be maintained. If a fertilization does not occur, this corpus luteum is going to disintegrate and this scar tissue is going to be called the corpus albicans. And you can see right over here, this is a three-dimensional representation of a corpus albicans. So this was once a corpus luteum, which you see over here, it degenerated and became a corpus albicans. So here is the corpus luteum again. Here is the corpus albicans. In this model, we can see three corpora albicantes, which is the plural way of saying corpus albicans. So here is one corpus albicans, here's another. Both of these are shown in three-dimensional relief. And here is another corpus albicans which is shown in two dimensions. So if we take a close look at this. So here's a closer look at the corpus albicans. Now it is shown in a two-dimensional slice. Essentially, again, this is scar tissue that fills in the space that remains after the cells of the corpus luteum degenerate and are slowly replaced by connective tissue.